Betting Control and Licensing Board. On Tuesday, the firm said that it had positive engagement with the government and it was optimistic of resuming business soon. The government revoked Sport Pesa's license in July on grounds that the company had failed to meet its tax obligations. Sport Pesa in August cancelled all local sponsorships and advertisements, citing an unfavorable business environment. However, the company has now said it is pleased with its engagement with government agencies. The gaming firm was among the 27 affected by the government's decision to cancel operating licenses and close pay bill numbers. Now, elsewhere is that former football star McDonald Mariga's candidature for the Kibra by-election has been challenged by a member of the Jubilee Party. One of the aspirants on Tuesday appealed the decision by the party's National Election Board to give Mariga the Jubilee ticket, terming it unfair, deceptive and shrouded in secrecy in addition to being in contravention of the Jubilee Party's constitution. In his appeal against Mariga's nomination, Maurice Apita Kenyanjui, who also sought to fly the Jubilee flag, also alluded to claims that Mariga is not a registered voter. It is understood that Mariga is being fronted by Deputy President William Bruto against the will of some Jubilee leaders. All right, and still making headlines in politics where ODM, a Kibra consensus, and of course, ODM leader Raila Odinga is tomorrow set to be chairing a crucial meeting with the party's top decision-making organ to decide on the mode of nomination for the Kibra by-election. The crunch talks some come amid reports that the meeting has been convened to endorse consensus as the mode of nomination. The party's National Elections Board has already cleared 11 candidates for the anticipated primaries, although the party hierarchy is set to be cautious on using the universal suffrage mode. The nomination was initially planned for August 31st, but was pushed forward to September 7th due to lack of security. And definitely, it's clear, Sheikh Shada, between now and November, the whole issue of Kibra by elections will keep feeding into a news diary and definitely, definitely we shall run the events by you as and when we get them but also remember today it's all about the Mao and uh, that is the top story and we shall be following up on this remember during the first hour we were able to link up with our reporter Dan Kaburu who's currently on location just monitoring the situation and among the three angles to this story is the environment environmental question, the matter of law, whether or not Mao is a trust land, there are some politicians who are contesting that, and most importantly, the humanitarian angle. Remember, the instruction even from the president, courtesy of a briefing he had from George Natembea, the Rift Valley, uh, the Rift Valley uh, Regional Coordinator, he said that yes, it can go on, mm -hmm. but in a humanitarian or in a humane manner. Right. So Dennis Matara filed a certain report mm -hmm. for us where tension remains high in the Maasai Mau forest area as more families continued to flee their homes ahead of the impending evictions. Now, several homes were deserted while schools remained closed, even as the government maintained the evictions will be done in a humane manner. Now, Dennis Matara has that report for us. Let's take a look. Scores of families troop out of the Mao forest, carrying whatever they could master on their donkeys and motorcycles. Most are marching into an uncertain future, having spent their life savings on the contested land. But of a sudden, in the morning, I was taking tea outside here. Nikastuka maskar wa mekucha wengi, wa metokea uko. Wakasema leo, leo ni leo ni tunaupiri. Leo ni kuupiri, muondoke. The presence of truck loads of police officers sending a clear message that the government was committed to ensuring the country's largest water tower is cleared and later restored. This as the government suspended its decision to close down all the schools in the forest to allow the students to effectively prepare for the forthcoming national examinations 
as it maintained the exercise will be as humane as possible. We will continue to ensure that all our children in all places, including difficult places like in formal settlements, like in the Mao, like in any other area, are not left behind. However, the directive not to close down the schools coming a little too late. Our team visited some of the schools in the forest and found ghost structures. This is one of the schools which normally has over 500 learners, but it's yet to open its doors for third term. The learners and teachers, part of victims of the Mao eviction. Hapa sasa hakuna mtu watoto wametawanyika hata shule yenye ilikuwa karibu yenye imechengwa miaka ingine iliyopita lakini naye imefungwa sasa watoto watunasanga wataenda wapi According to some of the village elders we met in this section of the forest locally referred to as Sierra Leone in Narok South the initial settlers were former military personnel who had returned home from the then war torn country today the place is deserted <laughs> On a normal day, this market will be a beehive of activities. But Tuesday, only police trucks were busy crisscrossing the area. Residents claim police officers had turned brutal, threatening to shoot anyone who dared defy the directive to move out of the forest. Phase two of the eviction, something that has seen uh, politi politicians rather weigh in on it. And... Uh, Whatever rhetoric that has been informing this particular story, politically speaking, right. it begs the question, where does it leave those that have been living in the Mao this far? Mm -hmm. Of course, something that we will definitely be seeking answers for mm -hmm. later on um, as we continue to cover that particular story. But for now, moving away from our borders where at least seven people are confirmed to have died in the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian wreaked havoc on the island nation. Now, Prime Minister Hubert Minnis said the country can expect more deaths and said parts of the Abaco Islands had been decimated by the storm. The hurricane has finally moved away from the Bahamas after causing widespread destruction. And latest reports say the storm is moving parallel to the coast of Florida. Although Hurricane Dorian has weakened to a Category 2 storm, it has grown larger in area and has maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour, which is 177 kilometers per hour. And of course, hashtag xenophobia has been trending on Twitter and it informs Indeed. our next story where xenophobic uh, or Nigerian president Muhammadu Buhari's government uh, Tuesday summoned South Africa's envoy and said it would dispatch a delegation to Pretoria to express deep concern of attacks on Nigerians in a wave of xenophobic violence. The decision came after mobs uh, descending on business hubs and townships in various parts of South Africa, looting dozens of shops and torching trucks driven by foreigners in a surge of anti-migrant sentiment. Buhari has noted with deep concern reports, uh, reported attacks on Nigerian citizens and property in South Africa since August 29, 2019. His presidency said in a statement that the president ordered the foreign minister to summon the South African envoy to get a brief on the situation, express Nigeria's displeasure and get guarantees for the safety of its citizens for and their property. Right, moving on to what's happening in the UK where Johnson suffers major defeat and of course Prime Minister Boris Johnson has raised the prospect of a snap election on Tuesday after he suffered a major parliamentary defeat over his Brexit strategy that could delay Britain's exit from the European Union. Now just six weeks after taking office, the Conservative leader was hit by a huge rebellion among his own MPs that leaves him without a working majority in the House. House of Commons as he looks to take Britain out of the EU on the 31st of October. Now, 21 Conservatives joined opposition MPs to begin the process of drafting legislation that could stop a no-deal exit by delaying the departure date by three months. The Prime Minister had earlier warned that rebels who voted against him would be expelled from the party, while one other Conservative former minister, Philip Lee, dramatically defected to the 
pro-European Liberal Democrats addressing Braying MPs immediately after the vote, in which the government was defeated 328 votes to 301, Johnson said he had no option but to move to call an early general election. And he remains to have the fantastic idea that he will brief Britain on come October 14th when the Queen is expected to address uh, the British Parliament so we shall keep tabs with this Quite story. a turn of events isn't it? That's true quite a turn of events and elsewhere is that a 14 year old boy in the US state of Alabama has confessed to killing five members of his own family. Now those killed were the boy's father, stepmother and siblings. Three were found dead at the scene while the other two died in hospital. Police say the boy is cooperating with officials and there is no indication yet on any motive or how he obtained the weapon used, a 9mm handgun. The shooting happened late on Monday and according to investigators, the boy initially called police to say he had had gunfire coming from his family home. He later confessed to the attack and gun violence now is common in the U.S. According to one monitoring site, there have been almost 300 mass shootings this year alone. Wow, that is quite a high number really. 300. And it is very unfortunate because at the same time, this all brings it back to mental health. Mm -hmm. And right about now, remember, we've been asking you to kindly engage us online, hashtag K24 Daily Brief. And we would like Shiksha Aurora to just walk to the touch screen and get to, you know, sample your feedback in as far as what you've been saying online is concerned, Shiksha. Thank you very much. Taking it away, of course, we'll be taking you through what has been trending and how you've been reacting to some of the stories. So, yes, let's get into that right here on hashtag K24 Daily Brief. Remember, that is how you're going to find us. That's how your messages will be uh, reached to us. And, of course, if you want to tell us what's happening where you are, well, you're very welcome to do that as well. For now, we'll, we'll be taking you to what's happening right here on uh, the Twitter platform that is at K24 TV as well as Facebook and message that's 21222 for now taking you to exactly what is happening as we speak of course the live events that we've been covering and we've got um, our reporter on standby that is Alfred and he's going to be giving us more details regarding what to expect where he is from Muranga County we will be taking it right about now and let's listen in to exactly what Alfred is going to be telling us with the latest in Muranga County Na masani sana shiksha rawa na kutuma yuko salama kutoka upande wa studio. Mina kupokea kutoka upande huwa muranga. Kwenye jengo liondefu sana kutoka upande huu li jilikana kama menta complex. Na hii leo tunatarajia komba. Kama, kama unavyo fahamu ni kwa kaunti ya muranga imekuwa na visa vingi. Vyo unyuaju wa pombe na pombe ilio haramu. Pombe ambayo imekuwe kiuwa wakazi wa eneo hili kwa kwa kiwango kilicho juu sana na hii leo county commissioner wa, wa Muranga Mohamed Bare atakuwa anaelekea upande wa Gatanga ili kuweza ku, ku, kuzindua mfumo wa kupiga picha kutoka juu jiulikanao kama drone ili waweze kupata wale wanao wanaopika pombe katika mito ya Gatanga katika mto wa Chani eneo hilo na anatarajia kwamba hii itakuwa ni njia moja muhimu sana ya kusaidia kupigana vita dhidi ya pombe haramu katika kaunti hii na hii leo bado kwenye mfumo wale vijana ambao wanaweza kusponsoriwa wanaweza ku na na mwakilishi wa, wa wanawake katika kaunti ya Muranga B Sabina Chege watakuwa na fuzu kutoka kausi ambazo wanaweza kusoma na hizi ni kausi ambazo zinaweza kuchukua miezi mitatu na ni baada ya kupewa udhamini na pesa za zinazojulikana kama GAF ama National Government Affirmative Action Fund na hii leo watakuwa wanaweza kufuzu katika kosi mbalimbali kama vile kusuka nywele kazi za stima na zinginezo na ili waweze kujikimu kimaisha na kama tulivyoangazia maneno mengine jana ni kwamba kumekuwa na visa vingi vya ajali za pikipiki na jana wanishajua pikipiki katika eneo hilo wamekuwa kilalamika kwamba hawajakuwa kipokea pesa zao baada ya labda kupata ajali ama pikipiki zao kuibiwa na siku ya leo tumeamua kumtafuta mmoja wa wa msimamizi wa bima katika kaunti ya Muranga ili aweze kutueleza jinsi kunavyoendelea jinsi wanaambia wanafanya kushughulikia kwamba bima za pikipiki zao zinashughulikiwa na hii leo ningeweza kumkaribisha mmoja wa wasimamizi katika kaunti hii aweze kutueleza jinsi wanavyo bima hizi pikipiki katika eneo hili na mambo mengine ah uh, thank you kwa majina naitwa Joseph Mwangi nafanya kazi kazi na insurance 
ya, ya insurance inaitwa Synergy Africa Insurance Agency hapa Moranga na jana nilifanikiwa kutazama watu wa pikipiki wakilalamikia mambo ya kutoripwa pikipiki wakati zimepata accident na wakati zimeimbiwa lakini ningetaka kuambia ya kwamba uh, inategemea na yule agent ama mwenye amekupea hiyo bima kama amekuelezea kinagombaga vile insurance inachukuliwa na mikakati yenye unaangalia juu upatiwe bima hivyo ningetaka kusema sasa watu wa insurance i mean watu wa moto wako na sacos kwa hivyo ni vizuri wakikusanya pamoja tunaleta tunawapea tuna masomo ya vyenye insurance inachukuliwa na vyenye mikakati yenye mtu anachukua wakati gari imepata accident ama imeibiwa juu tuweze kufanya proper documentation na waweze kulipwa in case gari zao zimeibiwa ama zimepata accident kwa hivyo insurance a uh, kwangu kwa ofisi yangu si kia juu na wanafua tanga insurance vizuri wanaweza kusaidia watu wa baiki wakati gari zimeibiwa hata gari za watu ningependa uweze kutuma nina mmoja kwa waendeshaji wa pikipiki ambao wamekuwa kilamika kuna ajali mingi na kwamba hawalipi ili jinsi waongeza kufanya uh, vile inavai iwe iwe most of the times wakati watu wa motorbike wako na hizo motorbikes wengi hawajaelezewa mtu akienda na moto tumeona wakisaidiwa kupata hizo license ya kuendesha motorbike. Kwa hivyo ya kwanza ni hiyo motorbike ukipata insurance, ukitaka insurance lazima iwe na document zote kama logo book na nini hizo vitu zote. Ju wakati ikipata claim unaitishwa hizo document. Number two mwenye anaendesha hizo motorbike lazima awe na proper document na havai kupotea ama kutoroka wakati gari imefanya accident akiwa na hizo document juu accident tunafanya tunasemanga ni kitu ni unpredictable wewe unasema accident itafanyika kwa hivyo si kitu unaweza sema kama utaenda kuua mtu ama kugonga mtu kwa hivyo hata ikienda kwa traffic wise inakuanga bearable kwa hivyo ni vizuri wawe educated ati mtu akifanya accident awache kutoroka anapigia agent ama mwenye amempea insurance anaenda anafuatilia hiyo case alafu kama motorbike ni comprehensive anaweza ripwa na kama ni third party hata huyo mwenye amegonga kimakosa ataripwa na insurance hapo ndio sababu tuko hapa juu ya kuwa na ku Asante sambo na shikshi kama unaweza kusikia hao ni baadhi hao ni maoni tu ya mwenye bima kutoka kaunti hii ya Moranga na nikitoka hapa nitaweza kuelekea upande wa Katanga ambako kutakuwa na uzinduzi wa mfumo huo kupiga picha wa drone niweze kuletea picha kutoka upande huo jinsi itakuwa katika shughuli za kujaribu kupigana na unyoji wa pombe koko sambo Thank you very much, uh, Alfred, from Moranga County, of course, for giving us an update regarding what is happening where you are. Now, remember that we have been covering a lot of topics that are trending. We've been telling you what's happening on social media, what's creating a buzz on uh, the Twitter and Facebook platforms. And right now, a video showing Kirinyaga woman representative Wangoing Girishi behaving badly on the road is still trending. And this footage short last week in Nairobi's Kilimani, where Miss Girishi is calm is seen breaking the law rules and overlapping in the video posted by Ustad Kambona Miss Girishi is accused of breaching traffic rules and even trying to physically assault another motorist on the road the woman rep and her entourage are seen quickly getting into the vehicle as it is driven away on the right side of the road right now let's take a look at that video Follow the rules, Wazimu Nini. Shame on you. And you're coming here to try and punch me, the grown woman. No, just get into the.
All right, of course, remember, that is what she reacted to it. And just to give you a little bit about what she says, she says, going by the clip, making rounds on social media. Yes, sometimes back, I was involved in an incident involving overlapping on the road and I was rushing to attend to a patient by the name Magdal Wawira, who was admitted at Kenyatta National Hospital. She goes on to say that sometimes even leaders are reminded by the citizens about the society and its values. And I took the lesson appreciated and apologized accordingly and she also says to grow together as one cohesive and harmonious society we must remind ourselves and correct each other whenever we go wrong or make mistakes so yes this apology has been taken very uh, warmly and has been embraced by people on twitter who said that it was very gracious of her to react in this way and very gracefully indeed accepting her mistake and also admitting to move on and to do better all right, for now, we'll be taking you to what's happening around you, what's happening where you are. We've also got our reporter, Kigotha, on standby, and he's in Nakuru. He's going to be giving us the latest regarding what to expect, where he is. And, of course, let's listen in to what he has to say right about now. We're taking you to Nakuru County, where he's on standby, and he will be giving us the latest from his end. Good morning, Kigotho. What is happening where you are? I can see a lot of activity behind you. Kindly kindly update us on what exactly is going on. Yeah, good morning, Shiksha Aurora. It's true, we're coming to you live from Nakuru County. And when you buy a big car, make sure you use the right channel or the right part of the uh, vehicle, uh, the, the, the road, so that uh, Kenyans don't uh, make sure that they are on your case. Today in Nakuru, we are going to follow up a story whereby uh, two uh, students, high school students, who are uh, ladies or uh, we can say girls have been arrested because they were found in a room, uh, in a room uh, together with an unidentified male uh, uh, after they were released by their parents uh, to go back to school. Instead of going back to school, uh, two days later they are found in a room, uh, maybe enjoying themselves uh, with the young person. Also, we are going to follow up a story I had uh, posted earlier of uh, school kids who are doing their practical, uh, uh, practical health lessons by cleaning Heshima area in Akuru, and they are going. They are telling the, their area residents also to be cleaning uh, the, the the environment and also to make sure that they don't pollute the environment, especially uh, uh, rivers and especially uh, where they live, the, the surrounding. Uh, but as per now, uh, I am in uh, Trendy Links Limited, a, ca a, a company that is. Uh, known by, uh, for making garments, uh, uniforms, scouts uh, uniforms, uh, military uniforms and other uniforms that come from uh, materials that are grown around a this area. As you can see, uh, even my camera person can just uh, pan a little bit. These are some of the uniforms that are made in this industry. Uh, these are the, 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 the materials sorry, that uh, are used, uh, mostly cotton, and they are local industries that are expanding in line with the big four agenda meanwhile uh, in in terms of production uh, this industry has employed more than 250 employees and it has a capacity of uh, 200 internship positions so today i'm going to be pitching tent today here and make sure that at least when i come back to you i bring a shirt or a blouse that is has k24 logo and also it has been dedicated to the uh, daily brief uh, crew back to you in studio as i prepare to bring uh, on board our uh, director all right, of course, that is Kigotho giving us the latest from Nakuru. Now, remember, this workforce actually has employed 200 workers and 35 internship students. This industry is working towards achieving the president's big four agenda. And very interesting, they're very interesting pictures brought to you by Kigotho from Nakuru. So we'll definitely be covering that as well right here on K24 Daily Brief. As we tell you what is happening around you, we've also got an update from our reporters in the different counties. So remember, you can keep interacting with us the hashtag is k24 daily brief that's where you're going to find us and tell us if there is something new that you want us to know uh, of what is happening around you we will definitely be taking your feedback very seriously and airing some of your views as well regarding the top trending topics of the day remember today we've seen the hashtags trend and these are um, hashtag somalia hashtag Linturi, hashtag say no to xenophobia, hashtag Bahamas. So these are some of the top 
trending tweets today on Twitter. So yes, you can also be a part of this conversation as we continue to interact with you further uh, and of course bringing to the latest from what is happening where